Well, a warm welcome to this evening's talk. It's still Saturday, the 11th of June. Now, I want to bring the latest on the lab leak hypothesis for the SARS coronavirus 2. Did it originate in a lab in Wuhan at the Institute of uh, Virology, as many people think? Or did it come from a natural zoonotic spillover infection? Well, I've just spent the last few hours, this is why I wanted to bring you this now, while it's still fresh in my mind, that reading this paper here. This is set up by the World Health Organization, Scientific Advisory Group for the Origins of the Novel uh, of Novel Pathogens, particularly SARS coronavirus 2. And the whole report is there. Um, it's, it's interesting. Um, but actually, to give you the bottom line on this video, I don't know whether to laugh or cry really. <laughs> but, but I'll tell you about it anyway. But but they, they are considering lab leak hypothesis. So they do say more work is needed. But they're also saying that natural spillover event is currently the most likely plausible explanation. Now, just before we, we look at a little detail on this video, I'll just tell you a, a funny story. Because um, I'm trying to get into, into comedy. So I went round to a friend of mine's late last night and he was looking on his front drive for his key. He had a nice light on his front drive and he was looking there walking up and down and um, looking for his key. He couldn't find it. I said, are you sure you lost your key on the front drive? He said, oh, no, no, I lost the key in the back garden. So I said, well, why are you looking on the front drive? And he said, well, I haven't got a light in the back garden, so I've got to look here. As I say, nothing to do with the, the talk. Let, let, let's, get on, let's get on to it now. Um, now, the NIH is another interesting um, grouping here. So the, the NIH in the States... Um, cancelled funding for bat coronavirus research project uh, and this was uh, the 28th of April 2020 so NIH had been funding this at the Institute of uh, Wuhan Institute of Virology. Now it's all very well criticising the um, uh, rightly critiquing the World Health Organization but um, has the National Institutes of Health released everything we, we want to know about this? I mean that's not entirely clear to everyone. If anyone from the NIH wants to come on, of course, onto the channel, they'd be more than they'd be more than welcome to come. But let's stick with with what we know rather than speculation. So um, we we do know the NIH uh, cancelled funding. Now, the, the, this group, the scientific group, what is it? Scientific? Uh, where, where is it? Scien scientific advisory group for the origins of the the pandemic. This group came together after that laughable report from the WHO China combined team it was just a complete joke they were saying things like um, well let's have a look at what they said uh, lab leak theory was extremely unlikely they said uh, but they did want more uh, research done into frozen fish imports from um, frozen fish imports into China I mean it's just a ridiculous and, and, and rightly so. It did, did the WHO credibility no good whatsoever. So anyway, uh, this is the new report into viral origins. Now, the members of the group from Brazil and China and Russia, according to the uh, Washington Post article commenting on this, that's the actual um, report there if you want to click on that. Um, members from the group from uh, of this group from Russia, China and Brazil objected to calls for further investiga investigation into a lab leak theory. Why would you want to, a priori, reject that? So that's a good question for the uh, Brazilian, Chinese and Russian members of that group. Some might wonder why they're still on that group if they have closed minds. Um, because this group is there to investigate and yet this is, seems to have been completely closed off by these particular nationalities. I mean, why such a scientific opinion as that should be so influenced by nationality? I'm not really sure. A bit strange really, isn't it? Anyway, let's go on. Now, Dr. Ted Ross um, has actually sent two letters for further information into the laboratory hypothesis, particularly. Now, this is, uh, this is actually from the report itself. So this is in that report if you want to look through it. I mean, you, you do get a fairly good review from the executive summary. You can just read it through in, in 10 minutes and get it directly from the report there's always the possibility i've completely misunderstood it so always worth checking for yourself so scientific advisory uh, group on origins was not provided with any further information so whether the 
Chinese authorities wrote back to Dr. Tedros and says, well, here's some information on the lab leak hypothesis. If they were, the group themselves was not uh, informed. So what's the point in having a group if it's not informed? Already it's not starting to make too much sense. Uh, now, the group does talk quite a lot, quite pointedly, really. Um, you almost get the impression the group are trying to tell us something. Um, so the group here is saying that the possibility of uh, novel pathogens escaping into the human population due to breach in the laboratory uh, can occur, and it's happened before with other pathogens. Uh, and it points out that in some countries, lower middle income countries, the biosecurity is not as good as it could be. And that could lead to inadvertent or deliberate escape of pathogens, which is quite possible, of course. It didn't mention any country in particular, of course. Um, need for identification on gain of function research where viruses are made more capable to infect further cells to allow further study. And uh, dual, um, dual use research of concern. So what this means is that, for example, you could be studying a virus that, uh, to treat a disease, which is good, but you could also use the same information to create something like a, a biological weapon. That's what that means, dual use. So any particular knowledge could be put to different purposes. Well, at the present time, availability of epidemiological and sequence data suggests, and this is all direct from the report, suggests that the ancestral strain to SARS coronavirus to have a zoonotic origin. So that's what they're saying. But does this stand up to scientific scrutiny? Does this statement make any sense? They say the closest genetically related viruses, beta coronaviruses, identified in rhinophilus bats. Correct. Now, the genetic overlap there is 96.1 with the Chinese bats and in Laos, 96.8% uh, genetic similarity and the group conclude therefore from this from these levels of similarity at this point the strongest evidence is still around zoonotic transmission as if this was any kind of evidence it is not it is not those similarities are not strong enough to indicate possible ties they're just not that's not enough nothing like enough and yet they say this is the strongest possible evidence. Why would a scientific group say that? I am quite unclear. Now, just to give you some evidence of this, the, the chair of the committee herself, um, Professor uh, Vventner, chair of the WHO team, that's chair of the team that actually wrote this report. Um, so the very chair of the team who, who wrote the report, um, she says this direct quote, Again, this is quoted in the, in the Washington Post article. However, the precursor viruses that have been identified in bats are definitely not, not close enough to be the virus that spilled over into humans. So the chair of the group is saying no. The group itself in its report is saying it's the strongest possibility because of this level of overlap in the genetic material with SARS coronavirus 2, but it's not enough. It doesn't make sense. That that is the uh, the possible cause. The chair is saying that's not close enough. Now, famously, of course, we know that well, a lot of people know that. Uh, I'll put a few examples here. Actually, uh, chimps have got ninety-eight point nine percent genetic overlap with humans, and yet we're really quite different. Bonobos, ninety-eight point seven. Human to human, ninety-nine uh, point one. In other words, between you and the most distant human. Uh, you can find the 0.1% uh, genetic uh, variance, and yet we are really quite different, and yet we're 99.9% .9 all the same. So these very small variances in genetics make a big difference. So I think you can see from this just how big a difference um, that is, how far off target 96.1% is, how far off target 96.8% is. It's way off target. Um, it can't be true. And just out of interest, human, uh, humans and bananas have got a 6% overlap. In other words, um, bananas have 60% uh, have of the genes present in human beings. Same genes, because the biochemical processes are very similar in us and bananas. But I don't feel 60% banana. So there you go. Um, nothing, nothing like good enough, and yet the team seems to be drawing inferences on fr from that. And yet the head of the team herself is, is rejecting it. 
correctly so rejecting it. Um, however, um, the team do point out so far neither the virus progenitor nor the natural intermediate hosts or the spillover event to humans have been identified. So we don't know where this virus came from, the viral progenitor, we don't know. So how they can say that and how they can say it's the most likely, I don't see there's any, I don't see there's any evidence for that because they are saying themselves the viral progenitor, where the virus came from, the, the parents of the virus, the grandparents of the virus, if you like, nor the intermediate hosts, the animals that it went through, nor the spillover event to humans. None of this has been identified. We simply don't know any of this. Now, of course, Chinese, the Chinese would like to get this done and dusted squared away, uh, identify the spillover event. And I think it's reasonable to assume that the Chinese authorities and scientists have been working on this. And if they came up with something, they would tell us. Of course, if it was a viral origin, they can't come up with anything because, sorry, it was a lab orig origin to the virus. They can't come up with anything because it's a lab origin. It came, came, from, the, it came from the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Um, so all of those things that could uh, prove the negative None of them have been done, despite, I would suspect, quite rigorous attempts to uh, to do so. Um, now, the group agree that the human seafood market in Wuhan, uh, and I think everyone agrees on this, uh, was an amplification event. So maybe a few viruses got in there and that amplified it. So that increased the virus. It was an amplification event. But that does not mean it was an origin event. It could be, but it doesn't necessarily mean that. So the group say further studies uh, to follow up, so several gaps in our knowledge, so, so they, they do admit this. Yet to be determined where the spillover event occurred, we don't know. Need to examine environmental samples collected in the market, presumably not provided. Need to examine the clinical history of seroprevalence in humans. Again, where is that information? Uh, verification analysis of human samples. So it's necessary to verify where these samples came from. Collected through the National Surveillance Programme, particularly in the months prior to December 19. How long had this virus been circulating before December 19? Well, national blood samples taken throughout the region, particularly in China, could help us to uh, identify that. Um, was it was it in um, September, October, November 20, 2019? Was it even earlier than that? We'd need verified blood samples to show that, but the, the team are specifically saying that they haven't got them. They're specifically saying that they need these. Um, genetic studies of coronavirus in wildlife species. Yeah, OK. It's never, I'm not saying knowledge is a bad thing, but that is a bit like looking on the front drive, isn't it? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not knocking it. Do, do it. It's probably worth doing. Uh, the scientific advisory group on origins uh, specifically say they've had no new lab leak information. So Dr. Tedros, uh, as we say, wrote twice. Uh, did he get a reply? We don't know. He hasn't said Um we assume not, because you would assume that if he did have a reply, he would pass that on to the specific group uh, instigated by the WHO, and they specifically say they haven't got it. Do you see the bit where I'm tempted to laugh or cry? It really is. It really is. Uh, yeah, it is, isn't it? Uh, recommendations for further investigations to this and other possible pathways. OK, other possible pathways should be investigated, of course. Um, the group will remain open to any and all scientific evidence when it becomes available. Well, will it become available? I'll let you decide what you think about that. To allow for comprehensive testing of all reasonable hypotheses. Well, there's nothing to disagree with there, is it? That's motherhood and apple pie. Um, they do stress is the first preliminary report to the WHO. The work is ongoing. Well, you know, it's been two and a half years now. Come on. Uh, the work of the group should be read as a work in progress. You know, let, let, let's hope they're not just hoping to kick this into the long grass until everyone's forgotten about it. 
um, they actually seem to be bending over backwards to say, well, this is just preliminary. We haven't got very far yet. Okay, that's what they're saying. Um, global framework to study uh, pandemic, uh, viruses of pandemic uh, potential is clearly a good idea. Uh, but they do note there are key pieces of data that are not yet available. Key pieces of data that are not yet available. So if they're not available after two and a half years, when will they become available? Uh, will they ever become available? So do we have any strong evidence to suggest that this virus came from a natural spillover event? Um, no, we don't have any evidence that this virus came from a natural spillover event, despite uh, many sources looking for that. Do we have any, any evidence that this virus came from the Wuhan Institute of Virology? No, but there again, we don't have information on that. This is why people are suspicious. We need clear information because if there's nothing to hide, there's nothing to hide. Let's have that information. Let's have it in the public domain. But I'm not holding my breath. So will we ever know? I think I think we can, if we do more and more work on this, well, we can say, well, it wasn't that species that was the spillover event. It wasn't that virus that was the spillover event. We can already do that. And of course, the more and more possibilities you eliminate, uh, that leaves... A limited number of possibilities as being the answer. So um, there you go. Um, I still don't know whether to laugh or cry. You can decide what you'd like to do. But either way, thank you very much for watching this video.